Welcome to the week four, the difference between web 2.0 and the web 3.0 technologies. Just got done talking about cloud computing where we think about everything that we do being offshored into some account, some server, someplace else. Web 2.0 actually is very much related to that, but it's a little bit different. If you can zoom in on my little crib notes here, my cheat sheet, you can see that it's primary primarily what I would say is user generated content UGC user generated content simply means that instead of the company or the business or the person who made the website clickety clack right here instead of them sending it off and you viewing it and following their links around like a pbs.org we're now talking about you and me and everybody else in the world can contribute to the content. We create the content. YouTube is the perfect example of this. Every video on there, almost every video, is made by somebody other than YouTube. YouTube is the housing, the resource for it. Uh, your book actually, or some, a lot of books, talk about uh, Web 2.0 being free always. Well, that's not necessarily true, and it also talks about it being primarily web-generated content. That's not necessarily true either if you really think about it for instance YouTube I'm creating a YouTube video right now I am NOT creating the content on the web though I'm not doing it in the cloud I'm doing it here locally someone's videotaping me right now and we're using an iPad to do it so that content is not being created on the web it can be created on the web for instance in like Wikipedia I can create my content right in the web and share it with everybody else but the point of Web 2.0 is that my content, this video, is being uploaded to the site, and that's the content of the site shared with everyone. One of the other misnomers about Web 2.0 is that it's free and open for everybody, that wikis and blogs and stuff are open for everybody. That isn't necessarily true either, because Web 2.0 technologies, many of them, the good ones, can be restrictive in who gets to see it. Now overall the general scope of web 2.0 is that it's supposed to be open and free and everyone can use it in its public domain but it's not always true just remember that all right now we're going to talk a little bit about cloud computing we're going to regress back to what we just got done talking about last week and we're going to talk about how web or cloud computing rather is that offshore computing well web 2.0 relies on cloud computing it has to house itself in that cloud computing style. In other words, anything that you really meet up with in Web 2.0 is also going to be cloud computing. But don't get confused, it's not necessarily the other way around. Just like your thumb is a finger, but I just screwed that up. I cannot believe I did that. It doesn't matter, I'm going to keep going here. Ready? Just like all of your fingers right here on your hand are fingers, right? And actually, yes, your thumb is a finger. What am I talking about? But your fingers are not thumbs. So that's the way we have to think about this. Basically, cloud computing houses Web 2.0, but Web 2.0 doesn't mean, uh, or Web 2.0 is in cloud computing, but cloud computing doesn't mean that you're necessarily doing Web 2.0. Now we have to move on to Web 3.0. Before we were talking about user-generated content. Well, now we're talking about dynamic user content or dynamic user morphology, basically. We're talking about that the website is getting so stinking smart that it understands you, your likes, your dislikes. I'm eating oatmeal from Starbucks. Yes, you know that about me now, right? Well, guess what? Starbucks knows that about me now, too, because I use my silly little Starbucks card each and every time I go, so now they know how many oatmeal I bought this month, last month, and they can even predict how many I'm going to buy next month. This is a great marketing scheme. Well, websites can do the same thing. Every time you register an account and you do something and you mess around like in Facebook, it tracks everything that you do so that the advertisements that you see, the mashups that it creates, and everything that you experience starts to become a personalized space for you. That's Web 3.0. Web 3.0 is it's smarter than you are or as smart or it learns with you and it's learning about you. So just to finish up this segment, let's talk a little bit about Facebook. Facebook is all three of what we've been talking about. Cloud computing, it's also Web 2.0, and it's Web 3.0.
like we just discussed. It's cloud computing because, well, we Facebook, friend, and poke one another out in the cloud, right? And it's 2.0 because it's all user-generated content. Facebook gives us the shell to put everything in, but then we post all of our comments and we give our updates to our friends, let them know where we are, and we even invite and message people right in the cloud. We create the content. And finally, it's that 3.0 tool, just like I said, Facebook learns from you and Facebook knows who you are. So that's it, that's week four in a nutshell, the difference between Web 2 and the Web 